Hey guys, I'm going to read you a book called Meet the Orchestra. The orchestra plays tonight. The audience has arrived. The musicians are coming on stage with their instruments. What a lot of different kinds they play. Strings, woodwinds, brass, and percussion. We're going to start with the string family. Violin. Players with like instruments sit together in families. The violin belongs to the string family, along with the viola, the cello, and the big string bass. You play all of these with a bow or pluck them with your fingers. The violin is the smallest of the string instruments. Its song can be bright as laughter, light as air, soft as a whisper, or sad as a tear. Viola. As instruments get bigger, their voices get lower. The viola looks and sounds like a big brother to the violin. It has a deeper tone reminding you of evening shadows, cloudy skies, and the color blue. Cello. You can't tuck a cello under your chin the way you do a violin or viola. It is so big you must rest it on the floor. The cello's rich, mellow voice speaks of deep feelings like joy and sadness. It can remind you of the calm beauty of a drifting swan and of the color purple. String bass. The string bass is the grandpapa of the string family. It is so tall that you must stand up or sit on a high stool to play it. When bowed, its low notes moan and groan. When plucked, its booming sound helps other musicians keep the beat. Now we're moving on to the woodwind family. Flute. The flute belongs to the woodwind family, along with the piccolo, oboe, bassoon, and clarinet. You blow into these instruments to play them. At one time, all of them were made of wood, but today the flute is often made of silver or even of gold. To play the flute, you hold it sideways, tighten your lips, and blow across the air hole. With practice, you can trill like a bird or play slow, quivering notes as cool as a mountain stream. Piccolo. The piccolo, little sister to the flute, loves attention and always gets it. This tiny flute is so shrill, you can't help hearing it. Its high notes almost pierce your eardrums. Yet everyone loves the piccolo because it has such a great sense of fun. Oboe. The oboe has a mouthpiece made of reed. The reed can be fussy and troublesome. Then it honks like a goose with a bad cold. But usually the oboe can be trusted. The oboe plays that single note to which the whole orchestra tunes just before the concert begins. Its voice may remind you of faraway castles at sunset, autumn leaves, and the sadness of saying goodbye to someone you love. Bassoon. The bassoon is like a large folded oboe. It also has a reed mouthpiece. Its voice, like its name, has a kind of loneliness. Yet the bassoon can also be playful. It chats and chuckles with the other instruments. You often hear it chugging along like a tough little engine. Can't you almost see puffs of smoke coming out the top? Clarinet. Here are two different kinds of clarinets. The straight one is nimble and quick. It toodles up and down the scale, never tripping over a note. Its cool tones melt in your ears, just like ice cream melts in your mouth. So that is a B-flat clarinet, and that is the instrument Miss Hale plays. This very long clarinet is bent at both ends so that it doesn't touch the floor when played. Its low, slow notes may remind you of clouds drifting across the moon or a snake swaying to a snake charmer's music. And that is called a bass clarinet. We are moving on to the brass family. French horn. Make way for the brass family, the powerhouse of the orchestra. Even when they play softly, you can sense a huge cat crouch to spring. The brass do not have reed mouthpieces. Your lips buzzing against the metal mouthpiece produce the sound. The tubes of the horns magnify it as a bull horn magnifies an announcer's voice. The French horn is like a big bright bell at the end of a long thin tube. The tube is coiled so that the horn can be played with one hand on the valves and the other inside the bell. The hand inside softens the sound. Uncoiled, the French horn would reach all the way across a very large room. Someone would surely trip over it. The French horn has many voices. 
It can calm you with its gentle tones or thrill you with its gallant hunting call. Trumpet. The trumpet's shorter tube makes it look easier to play than some of the fancier brass. But is it? No, say the trumpeters. You must work just as hard to learn it. The trumpet's call is noble and exciting. It can remind you of flags flying, soldiers marching, and royal persons entering a grand hall. Tuba. The tuba has a huge bell and a very long tube. Do you remember that the bigger strings have deeper voices? The same is true of the horns. The bigger ones make lower sounds. The tuba seldom carries a tune. It is more of a rhythm instrument. Its oompas help the brass keep the beat, just as the thump of the bass does for the strings. We are now moving on to the percussion family. Timpani or kettle drums. The big kettle drums sit in the kitchen or percussion section of the orchestra. Everything that is beaten, banged, dinged, or pinged belongs there, just like all the instruments in the background. Have you ever heard the orchestra rumble with the sound of distant thunder? Suddenly it explodes with a boom, boom, boom. That is the timpani. They look like big kettles sitting side by side. Each has a slightly different pitch. You beat rapidly from one to another, making the thunder crash and roll. Symbols. The symbols look like a pair of pot lids. When banged together, they crash with the fury of an electric storm. If the kettle drums give you the roll of thunder, the symbols give you the flash of lightning. Hear them ring out just when the music reaches a peak of excitement. This is a proud moment for the whole orchestra. Piano. Now the piano is kind of a tricky one because you do tap or hit the, the keys, but inside of a piano, there are actually strings. So it could really be considered a string or a percussion instrument. Uh, if I had to choose, I would say it's probably a percussion instrument because the way we make the sound is by tapping the key and then a little hammer hits the strings inside. When you sit down at the piano, the black and white keys make your fingers want to dance. From the center, you can play them all, the high ones on your right and the low ones on your left. When you hear a murmur of notes burst into thundering chords, then fade into silence, it is probably the voice of the piano. When it is over, you may want to clap or perhaps even cry. Conductor. Now we meet the conductor. He is often called maestro, which means master of the orchestra. That he is, for he leads the musicians at all times. He does it mostly by talking with his hands. In his right hand, he holds a small stick, the baton. With it, he beats time. His left hand motions. You play now, be quick, livelier, louder, softer. Ah, that's perfect. A raised eyebrow says, you're playing off key. The musicians have taken their places. The strings, who are by far the largest group of players, sit in front, almost filling the stage. The woodwinds sit close together at the center. The brass and percussion are in the back. The conductor strides on stage in front of the orchestra, raises his baton. Let the music start. The orchestra played tonight. Now it is time to go home. Like the voices of their instruments, the musicians drift off into the night. The end.